Good evening and welcome everyone to our Light Bears Mission or LBM Community Empowerment Hour. Uh, just a little history, we started these programs um, during the infamous 2020 um, when almost everything was going online and we have shared various presentations on topics such as finance, which was our very first one, uh, nutrition, including plant-based cooking demos like this one. We did natural remedies. We actually have one coming up in a couple of weeks also. We, uh, natural remedies included a presentation on hydrotherapy and, and various other health topics. We did gardening and um, some other presentations that we shared with the community. You can find recordings of our past presentations at our website, which is Empowered for Health. It's the number four, empoweredforhealth.com. And if you are not already subscribed with us, you can um, go ahead and put your email address in the chat so that you can receive messages regarding our latest presentations. So it's our purpose to make a difference in the community through training and providing information that meets the needs of our community members and their families. We have found that we have people joining us not only from the community, but far and wide, it's even become international uh, that we've had people coming from out of the country and all are welcomed. We do believe we make a difference. We I uh, hope that our programs make a difference to the community and all that attend. And we do aim to continue sharing presentations to educate the community on topics such as overcoming addictions, the family, and much more. So stay tuned. We want to know your input in terms of what is interesting to you, what would interest you in terms of presentations, and we will try to provide those so towards the end of the program, we will be putting out a, a poll so that you can share that information with us. So we will be having a presentation and after the presentation, there will be a questions and answers period. Um, so before we get started, we like to start with a word of prayer. We believe that we gain success in all things by asking God's blessing on it. So let us have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you have blessed us with. We are thankful that we're able to come together and uh, learn something, especially uh, regarding cooking um, healthily. We ask that, that you would uh, be with everything as we go forward, including the technology and that it may be a blessing and everyone may be able to uh, walk away with something that they can use. Thank you once again. Thank you for the pres your presence with us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so yes, today's program, this evening's program is going to be um, a cooking demo, which you have seen. And we hope that it will give you ideas on how to add variety to your vegan options. As we uh, do, it, it will be a uh, recording of the cooking demo that was done by our chef of the day, who is Annalise Antunes. And I'm just gonna go and share some information with you about her. So she is our chef for tonight. She was born in the city of Porto Alegre in the south of the beautiful country of Brazil. Growing up in the city, her mom, an excellent cook and walker, made sure the family's organic basic food needs were addressed. At the age of 12, her mom, noticing her interest in food preparation, enrolled her in her first community nutrition class with the town's most famous Christian nutritionist, the beginning of many. At the same time, her love for fitness through volleyball was also born. After retiring from volleyball in 2008, Annalise discovered a new passion when a friend introduces her to road running in 2010. 
After moving to the United States in the mid 1990s, Annalise continued her studies primarily in languages. As a linguist, she founded a small medical Portuguese translation and interpretation agency called Abaya. Uh, you, Yoruba equals queen mother. Um, maybe we'll ask her about that later. Um, so for the past 11 years, Annalise has been serving her community, leading running and wellness groups in the DMV area, helping people address self-care through fitness and nutrition. She is a strong and loud force for preventive health care. Annalise enjoys helping others, great food, cultures, books, travel, laughs, interesting conversation, languages, music and arts, and social justice. Annalise, a nutritionist with a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition from Purdue University Global, marathon runner, Christian Yogi, vegan chef, and a holistic health coach certified through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, IIN New York. Annalise believes that our body, spirit, and soul are gifts from God, and it is a privilege to be able to take great care of it. And she, it's her goal to help others to do the same. So that is the introduction. We are now going to view the cooking demo um, as was advertised is uh, farro. It's a dish using farro. We're gonna learn a lot about that as we go. So here we are with the video. Hi, good evening. My name is Annalise Antunes, and it's a privilege for me to be here and talk a little bit about things that I love in your program called Empowered for Health. I'm Annalise Antunes. I'm a nutritionist, a holistic health and fitness coach at Bunmi Wellness. I, um, I have clients all over the world, but I have a physical office in Washington, DC. So if you are looking to improve your health, change your diet, lose some weight, or maybe drop some medications, I can help you with that. Please get in contact with me. I'll be happy to help you. Um, today, we are going to be talking about and cooking um, farro. So we are going to be making farro risotto, right? And if it was like five years ago, I will ask you or talk or say something about farro and you look at me like I have three hats, right? Like, what is she talking about? What is this farro? Uh, nowadays, it's a little, it's becoming more and more popular. I remember around five years ago or so, I went to a restaurant and I saw farro risotto and I started asking questions. Uh, and I said, oh, I remember, I remember that grain. It's a wheat. Um, we look at it, uh, it looks like a, you know, a regular grain wheat and um has a little bit of gluten doesn't have a lot so if you have celiac disease or you have some sensitiveness uh you might get away with it uh celiac disease you can you have to avoid but if you have gluten sensitiveness uh you might get away with farro because it has a little bit of gluten and uh, it's an ancient grain. It's a beautiful grain that, that has more fiber than brown rice and quinoa. You know, we know quinoa is the girl of the, the times, right? Everything is quinoa, this or that. It's an amazing seed. <laughs> it's an amazing seed, um, but uh, there comes farro. So farro, right? Farro is our ingredient of the day or of the night. Farro is a grain, an ancient grain. 
Uh, when we refer, when nutritionists and specialists refer as ancient, it's normally, it has to do with a grain that hasn't changed and it's, it's around for a while, right? It's not hybrid, it's around for a while. We can find Pharaoh in the Bible, it's mentioning the year. Um, it's a fibrous grain, it's very sturdy, it's a wheat. Um, if you use the original Pharaoh, which is kind of hard to find, you have to go to special stores or a health stores, and then you can find the original Pharaoh. Um, you cook, you use it more or less like you cook beans, right? You soak it at least four hours. Normally when I soak my beans, I soak overnight, uh, at least four hours of soaking overnight. And then you cook, um, maybe a first cook on a pressure cooker or a slow cooker. And then, you know, when it's halfway cooked, you can drain and then use it for whatever you try to do. Or you can find at some stores that's getting more and more popular, popular the Emmet Faro, which is the pearl faro. It has been treated a little bit and then you cook it more like rice, right? So you, you cut your time of cooking um, a lot, actually. You don't have to soak it and it takes from 15 to 25 minutes to to cook it. But why is faro so important? Why is gaining in uh, popularity over the last years? Um, it is a, a grain that is very tasteful. It has a nutty taste and you can use it to do savory and sweet. You can use faro, cook faro, and substitute for oats recipes. So when you have your favorite oatmeal recipes, you may substitute that for farro, just to give, you know, like a change and to, uh, to give your body different nutrients. Farro is rich in a bunch of vitamin Bs. So you have B3, it has B12, it's a bunch of vitamin Bs. It has, it's loaded with fiber, which is good for heart health. It's good for people that have diabetes type two, they're always concerned about the fiber. So Faro, I have it here, so I should show it to you, right? This beautiful brown grain. It looks like um, exaggerated brown rice uh, grain, right? Uh, um, it has this color. You can find it actually darker depending where it comes from. We understand that some grains, depending where they grew up, where they were developed, because of the minerals of the earth, it will dictate the color of the grain, right? So uh, you can find really darker, almost like dark brown farro. Again, does have a nutty taste. You can substitute for oats, for your oatmeal. Um, you can make bowls with it and fruit, uh, and you can also use as savory dishes. Uh, you can use any dish that requires rice. You can make it with uh, farro. Also, whatever recipe you have for quinoa, you can make it with farro. So salads, stews, soups, or just eat it plain. Like when we eat uh, rice, uh, you know, I, I, I forgot to tell you guys, I'm from South America. I'm a Brazilian girl, I'm from Brazil. So if you notice some words that sounds funny or in different accent, I'm not trying to kill your language. It's just my accent. But growing up Brazilian, we will eat rice. We will eat a bowl of rice, right? or my favorite rice and beans and it gives you actually a complete protein if you are looking for that that's a balanced meal complete protein rice and beans you can do the same with farro and farro even have more um protein 
and fiber than brown rice. So there you have it. When you use farro, you can do farro and beans, or you can do farro and some vegetables. Uh, you can do grilled vegetables, and there you have it, right? You have your complete meal. So my clients and you guys that if you have uh, watched other videos with me, you know that everything that I prepare, my goal is to give you a very nutritious meal, right? So everything that you prepare, it needs to be nutritious rich. That's how we nurture our bodies. That's how we keep our immune system health, healthy. And this day and age, with all these viruses and bacteria and all those things that we are experience, experiencing, we our focus should be how we can implement our health, have our immune system always healthy, those walls to keep those, um, those um, not wanted, wanted bacteria away, right? So everything is nutritionally dense. That's what we're gonna make today. Uh, farro risotto with being nutritious. Another thing that is my signature, and I always like to remember, is that I love things that taste amazing. <laughs> right? And sometimes people say like, oh, hell, I don't like healthy food. It doesn't taste good. So like, okay. So maybe you never try my recipes or dishes that I prepare because all my recipes, all my dishes, all the dishes that I prepare, they taste amazing. One of the secrets is combination. You combine your rich item, right, which we are talking about farro. We're going to combine farro with other things, herbs um, and other vegetables that are also nutritious but they are rich with flavor right so uh, even our fat our fat is going to be great and very flavorful so that's what we are going to be doing today a, a farro risotto tons of vitamin b's uh, fiber helps with digestion helps with heart health um, helps uh, give good uh, food to our good bacteria that's what we want a very diverse bacteria microbiome right um and with that we are making a risotto with mushrooms which are you know by all another of my favorite uh food i have so many and you watch my videos you see and say oh this is my favorite but it's true <laughs> i have many so risotto uh, mushrooms I have a medley here. So I have um, portobello, I just chopped white portobello, and I have shiitake. Shiitake is amazing. Mushrooms, I am in the United States, in Washington, D.C., and now it's currently summer. I'm not sure when you're gonna watch this. So now it's currently summer. And one of my favorite things to do, my activity is go to a farmer's market. I love to take clients at the farmer's market. I like to go there myself and talk with the mushroom guy or the mushroom lady. And they always introduce me to new mushrooms, things they found and, you know, exotic mushrooms. Uh, the importance for mushrooms is that besides having folic acid, and uh, vitamin B as well, vitamin A, uh, iron, uh, and B12, which is important for people, they are vegan, plant-based, or just try to have it a break and have a little bit more nutritious. This is your B12 right here, right? Uh, I have two packages of mushrooms, one package of shiitake, it's on the bottom, and then one package of white portobello. So it's around 16 ounces of mushrooms and two for two cups of farro. Then you understand. And the mushrooms also has a little bit of a nutty flavor. It has a umami um, taste that now we are starting to discover. It's a part of our tongue that it should, you know, before we thought it was one type of flavor and now we found that it's another one but this is for another time 
right? We're gonna combine those two amazing flavors, nutty flavors, with amazing herbs and some vegetables. So I have the king of flavor. So I have three large garlics. They are chopped. They are not finely chopped. They are kind of grossly uh, chopped because that's how I like it. And I have a cup of purple onions. They are super flavored. They, for me, they are the most strong, the strongest uh, onions we have. But then you can go with what you like and what your family like, right? If you don't want a strong flavor with onions, so maybe you go to Vidalia, you, you know, white onions and things like that. I tend to gravitate to purple onions and, um, and the Spanish onions also like that. Um, also, I have rosemary, so I'm very proud of my rosemary. I pick up two springs and then I chop really, not too, um, not too finely. Um, again, I prefer a little bit large. And this is for my garden, right? My potted garden. The rosemaries are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Rosemary is from the family of mint, so that aroma. It's multi-purpose. You can use uh, for food like we're gonna use today, or you can use a topic for hair, for skin. The oil, it's amazing. It's antibacterial. Um, also, um, aromatherapy is great to calm your nerves when you put on a diffuser. So rosemary oils, there you go. And we're gonna chop it out with basil, which is another flavor, uh, flavorful herbs, and it's gonna give a different kick to our dish. I have, um, I have some vegetable some. broth. So this vegetable broth, it's homemade. So I made myself, and it's I have this yellow color because I use yellow beets. It's a mineralized vegetable broth. Right, and I recommend you make your own because then you have the control with the sodium sodium portion, right? So, which is a big concern these days with vegetable broth um, and flavor, right? Uh, but I will have a, a future tutorial with vegetable broth. So, I have a mineralized vegetable broth, which is itself it can treat. Uh, I have I have been treating uh, clients with COVID, people they are doing chemotherapy that they need a more nutritionally dense diet, so vegetable broth and regular water, uh, filtered water, a little bit of black pepper. So I put a little bit of salt um, on my vegetable broth, so we are not going to be adding salt to our recipe today. You can make the risotto using water. Then you just add a little bit of salt um, or and maybe some onion powder or garlic powder to give you a rich and creamy taste. But let's go ahead and start this. I love this pan because they might cook the food itself after they heat it. Right, so it's a cast iron, and I'm gonna have my stuff here so I don't wanna burn my hands for you. And we are going to talk after this video, so you can ask more questions about faro, about the nutrients of faro, which what type of what type of diet you should use and incorporate it. Um Right, but we'll we'll talk later. We'll talk later. We're gonna move along. I don't wanna stay here forever. Heat the pot. When the pot is heated, I while I was talking, I let it heat a little bit. We'll add uh, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Again, all the ingredients, when you add good ingredients to your food, you have a different flavor, you know? So Everything here is organic, right? The best that I could have. So I have organic onions, I have organic garlic, 
I have organic farro. I have organic mushrooms that are from the, uh, this is not from the farmer's market, this is from the store. Um, and then I have uh, shiitake and I have a, a lion ling that I got at this at the store for another recipe. Um, the herbs are for my garden. I grew myself. They are organic. <laughs> and um, the, That's four spoons. And um, the vegetable broth, it's homemade, all with organic things. So after it heats a little bit, I add the uh, black pepper and the rosemary. So this is why we do this. There are some herbs and spices. They, on their regular form, they are very aromatic and they have all the oils and the ingredients we want. When we break down into oil and this hot oil, it starts breaking down other um, components, chemical components, that they are not soluble in water. So they will be soluble in, uh, in oil, right? So it's, you, we add more flavor to our food to our dish so black pepper you use to taste right? um, i have more or less one tablespoon of rosemary right so i just let it start it a little bit i'm adding the air i thought that you could see but you cannot so i just let it there so it breaks those cells those chemical cells a little bit and now i'm gonna add the onions with the onions i will let it caramelize a little bit again this goes with your your taste some people don't really like caramelized onions I, I like when they are transparent with that beautiful caramelized color. So I do this, I've been cooking since I'm nine, right? So I, I look and I know when it's the texture and the taste that I want in my food. So you're going to get there. You understand your taste, your family's like. Um, let it brown a little bit let it release those oils and those sugars onions has sugars has oils many components vitamin c amazing for common cold and many other uh this is anti antibacterial as well um so we let it do its thing why is doing its thing uh, let me talk a little bit more about farro and why it's increasing in its uh, popularity lately uh, if you are trying to watch your waist <laughs> which we all are especially after two years during COVID um, on a pandemic and everything was so restricted you want to add more fiber to your diet one way of adding more fiber to your diet without thinking it's eating those ancient grains those grains that are that have more fiber uh, i you know my clients know that i always push them for a nutritious breakfast with oatmeal right oatmeal has a ton of fiber fiber helps remove bad cholesterol from your body helps move things around so think about fiber as a sponge right so the fiber gets there and then you have those cholesterols those fats moving around just kind of trying to attach someplace and then the fibers are like so a, a big percentage of fiber our body uses but the largest percentage of fiber our body doesn't know what to do with so this is what happens it's very interesting since our body doesn't know what to do with it takes away right it's starting going to our intestines 
start moving down. And because the fiber is not happy that the body is like, I don't know what to do with you, you have to move out. So the fibers are like, okay, you don't want me here, so I'm gonna take stuff with me. I'm leaving, but I'm bringing things with me. So then that's what happened, is start bringing the fat and other things with it, then that's for our benefit. The, uh, there is another portion of fiber that it's food for bacteria, right? So our microbiome, if you never heard about microbiome, I will tell you, do a research on microbiome and why is that important. And fiber is food for microbiome. So the most, when we, when we keep our microbiome healthy with good food, if you could just smell this home, I'm telling you. Um, then, has the, then the microbiome will have the ability to fight some diseases for us, right? Because it's in the gut. Garlic. Now we add in the garlic. The thing why we don't add the garlic together with the onion is because garlic has less water. Right? So you add thing, one thing after the other and let it do its thing. If you add it together, uh, it will brown and it will be dark. And I don't really like garlic when it's too dark. It becomes bitter, right? So everything with has this balance. So this is what we do. We add the garlic at the least. It's the last ingredient we're gonna add to caramelize. Um, another thing you may add there, I don't really like for my taste, you can add half of a chopped bell pepper. It also gives you an additional um, flavor. I prefer a little bit simple. So we add our mushroom and let it sit for a minute there. Just let it brown a little bit. We're gonna let it brown for around, so for our onions, for our rosemary, black peppers and onions, around two minutes. We add, add the garlic, around 20 seconds to 30 seconds. We add now the mushrooms and just let them warm, you know, heat a little bit. So I would say two more minutes. Right. So another thing that mushroom does, it's because it's, it's a sponge really, it's a fungi, fungi and it will, absorb a lot of water, right? So you put water there and you say, what happened? It really absorbs. One tricky thing with mushrooms, and sometimes I know it's not for everyone, but that's the recommendation. That's what they teach us in school. That's the recommendation. You don't wash your mushrooms. Uh, if you purchase your mushrooms from a trusted place, I will recommend you guys not to use mushrooms that you find in the woods or maybe they grow in your garden after a period of heavy rain because mushrooms, they are tricky. It can be poisonous. So just use mushrooms from a trusted source and try to navigate to organic. So what you do, you have a brush. I have a mushroom brush and then I brush everything out all that dirt, I brush it out. Um, and then I chop and I add to my food. Uh, when you wash mushrooms, a lot of that water will come in and it will become soggy. It will change totally the flavor of your food. So mushrooms is one of those things that I know I have friends that they say like, Annalise, I can never not wash mushrooms. I say like, okay, do you. <laughs> and um, as a plant-based person, a vegan person, uh, we need that those bacteria, right? So that B12 that is there, it can be with the dirt. Uh, sometimes we perish because we are super clean, right? So it's important for us to walk bare feet in the, in the, in the dirt, especially um, 
especially in, in the beach, you know, you have all those amazing minerals that are on the sand from the sea. We have over 80 different types of minerals in the sea that will wash in the sand. So, you know, our skin is our largest organ. So when we walk there, we are taking care of our fitness, our circulation and things, but we are also absorbing things from the earth. So it's important to have that contact. So when you purchase mushrooms from a trusted source, you may have those different minerals from the earth, and then if you wash them, they go away, right? So everything here is exactly the way I want it to be. Let me show you, I hope you can see. Look at this color, it's just amazing. And we were there for what, two minutes, right? It's just beautiful. So this is our base. Now we add it in. Um, this is two cups of farro. It has been washed and dried. Right? We don't want, we really don't want extra water. Another step, adding our farro. There we go. Mix it a little bit. I'm telling you, this pan, it's, it's cast iron. iron. It does the job for you. And it's will allow you to save energy. So see the color? This is how I like to do this. I like to cook for 10 minutes with just water. Right? Because it will soften it up. So one cup of water. It barely covered. Maybe I should add a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little bit more. That will at least cover everything. Always have hot water around. It, it allow you to cook things faster. Two cups of water. Okay. Yay, so it covers a little bit. And we will allow that amazing mixture to start Releasing all the flavors, you know, into the farro, releasing all the colors, uh, and allowing the farro to do its thing, to break it down. 10 minutes and we'll be back. All right, so stick around. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Hi, we're ready. We are ready. We're waiting for you, right? Um, after the last 10 minutes, it's fully cooked. I like a little bit creamy. I'm not really into al dente farro. And uh, uh, let's check it out. Let's check it out. So the great thing about this um, this pans is that you can turn the you can turn the heat off, and it will continue to cook. So you don't have to turn the heat. Off after it cooked, you can turn it and just let it there, sit it simmering. Beautiful, right? Beautiful, and it smells amazing. What to do now? Remember, I told you that farro has a lot of protein, mushroom has a lot of protein. You want to add a little bit so you have a complete protein. This is basically a one pot meal with the mushroom and the farro. You do have a one pot meal. You have your carbohydrates, you have your protein, you have your fat. Remember, we add olive oil, um, we have our minerals, and we have our vitamins. So you have a one pot protein. I always like to add live uh, ingredients to my meals. Um, you can add a salad, right? You can start with a salad when you are serving people. 
Um, I did that for a function one time and I have two salads. So it was winter, so I have a warm salad and I have a cold salad, right? So you can have that. And it, it was just that, the warm salad, the cold salad, and the farro risotto. I think we have lentils too. No, we had a soup as well. We had a soup, right? So I always like to add some live uh, food, some live ingredients. So if I don't start with a salad before and I want to just one pot meal, what I do, I do bad with vegetables, right? So the vegetables that I chose today, uh, the chosen vegetable for today is baby kale. But what I think it goes very well with this dish because of the contrast of the colors. Remember what we eat is also what we see, especially when you have kids, you have teenagers or adults that are picky eaters. You always want to present your dish on a way that will attract their eyes first and they will complement with the taste and complement with all the nutrients that it will be nourishing their bodies, right? So I have baby kale, but I normally use lacinata kale. Lacinata kale has this strong green uh, color and a strong flavor as well. Um, have more protein, but today, I have this for my smoothies and I have it. I've purchased a lot. So we are going to be using baby kale as a bed, right? That's how we inflate this thing. So bed of baby kale. This is a little turning yellow. Bed of baby kale. Now we're going to add spinach. I'm sorry, our far risotto. Okay. Remember, it's about presentation as well. You want all the all the factors for a perfect meal. Nutritious, delicious, and attractive, right? <laughs> perfect combination. So, oh, so we have the basil, right? So fresh basil from my garden. We add in there and we mix it. So the next batch I will have basil because I forgot. I'm oh, sorry. And smell scent it out of this. Out of this rose scent. This is how we inflate. Can you see it? Yes, I know you can. This is how we do it. You can add um, sesame seeds, you know, put it on top of it. I just have white sesame seeds so it won't create the contracts that I'm looking for. If you have the black sesame seeds, it will create that impact. Um, let me add, I have a little bit of white here. So let me add a little bit of white sesame seeds. You won't. It's basically it's gonna blend in, but the black sesame seeds, oh, it's actually pretty. And finish touch. There you have it. Your farro mushroom risotto, right? Sometimes when we add a splash of lemon or lime, the flavors explode it. So I always uh, like to tell people, add a splash of lemon or lime and then try it for flavor and see if you need to add salt and if you need if you need to add uh, more pepper right but first give it a splash of the I have lemon here Love lemon. All right, give it a splash and then try and see if you need to add any more things 
it's perfect for people on a reduced sodium diet perfect for people they are watching uh, the weight uh, perfect to give a nutritious uh, meal to your body if you are nourish nurturing yourself back from a bad cold flu COVID if you are going through chemotherapy and you need rich things that might be a little bit heavy for you you kind of uh, sometimes uh, it's not attractive to things that have um, a lot of grains but if you can tolerate that's perfect for you all right it was a pleasure to be here with you today for your uh, community program i am super happy to serve again my name is annalise antunes and i'm a nutritionist a health, a holistic health and wellness wellness coach, um, based in Washington D.C. But I attend clients all over the world. If you feel like you would like uh, nutritional counseling, you would like to shift your diet to a healthier diet. Um, if you are thinking that you are taking too many medications so I can work with you and we work with your physician to reduce those things weight loss and in some I can help you have a healthier life thank you so much and we'll talk in a minute Okay, so that was our cooking demo, and we have uh, joining with us none other than Annalise Antunes uh, for our Q&A session. Here she is, live and in person. Okay. Hey, how are you? Doing well. I thank you so much for uh, preparing that uh, program for us, preparing, preparing a meal for us. I don't know, one day technology will allow us to, we saw the aroma coming up. <laughs> Melavision is coming. It's Melavision is coming. That will be my creation and I'll be rich. One day. <laughs> yeah. One day. We'll see. We'll see about that. Hmm. But there is one thing that I would like to say. When I was editing the video, I chopped a big chunk of it. Now that I'm realizing. So I I chopped the chunk that I add the, the broth. You know, I was going to ask, gonna ask about that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I cook 10 minutes with water and then I add the vegetable broth and I cook for more 10 minutes and then okay. I just them. So that's what great, it was. <laughs> great. Great. That was one of my questions. <laughs> and then you already mentioned that you're planning to have a tutorial in making vegetable broth. Yeah. So this is what's happening. Um, for the last two months, I'm planning this YouTube channel <laughs> and it's coming. So I have a lot of content already. So what's what's happening now is the final art. I have somebody doing kind of an opening, you know, we have to be fancy these days. So that's yeah. what I'm just waiting for that. Hopefully the next couple of weeks that will be live and functioning. And then, you know, then there will be stuff like that because I, as a nutritionist, I have different types of clients, but most people that have to start from zero, cooking from zero, right? So have to learn everything. So I have, I have tutorials how to make smoothies and how to make plant rice, how to, um, how to make the mineralized uh, vegetable broth, which is a powerful thing to, nourish you know nurture you back from diseases um there's like i don't know probably 12 vegetables there all super powerful like sweet potatoes golden beets um there are um what else oh it's a lot of things there there is uh seaweed you know so all those things that have a tons of minerals and and vitamins to nourish our body back and the flavor is amazing 
<laughs> so yeah, that's coming. That's coming. Sounds like something I would definitely want to check out because when you buy vegetable broth out there, you're not sure, you know, what you're getting. Uh, so as you yeah. said, you can know exactly what's in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of the questions, and you guys can continue putting questions in the chat, or at some point you can raise your hand. We can, if you want to ask a question audibly, we can do that as well. One of the questions that we had was about the vegetable, the um, vegetable broth, the brush, the mushroom. Oh, brush. The, the mushroom broth. It's yeah, just I, a regular mushroom. I saw the, the the question coming in, so I have this one. So I purchased. It's a silicone one that you can use to. I think what normally people use is to, um, to brown meat, right? So you put stuff on, on top of meat when you're trying to do stuff. So it's very soft and it's silicone, it has different sizes. So you just brush things away, right? So I wet the sponge a little bit, the brush a little bit, and that's how I clean my mushrooms. So I have colleagues that use just plain um, paper towel, right? You just wet the paper towel and then you just brush out the dirt from the mushrooms. So it's, you know, it's you, what you want is a soft uh, brush, mm -hmm. or, right? So you don't want something that is harsh because then you probably will hurt the mushroom. Um, yeah, so silicone. Uh, you can find this at dollar store everywhere, like Target, Amazon. <laughs> okay, okay, good to know. So, um, regarding, so you mentioned farro, it can be used just as you use rice. If there's a recipe that calls rice, you can use that instead, or, you uh -huh. know. Um, so, if there's, so this particular recipe, to, okay. This question first, and hopefully it's not a dumb question, but farro risotto. I was thinking pasta, <laughs> like farro with pasta or something like that. Result, what does risotto mean? Is that the one? Oh, risotto is Italian. Yeah, it's just an Italian um, basting brush. Thank you, Holland. Yes, so see, he knows the name. Um, it's just an Italian name right, for a dish. So you can use it, normally it's used for rice, when you use rice in combination with some vegetables, right? It is called a risotto. So that's, yeah, so that's what is, you know, risotto. I believe, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if there is a pasta called risotto. I think it's, you know, it's always, the, the, the thing with risotto is that when we make with rice, there is, uh, special rice, uh, oh, abrobio, abrobio rice. If somebody can correct my my uh, pronunciation, my pronunciation, oh, abrobio rice, abrobio rice. rice. Yes, that's how you say. It. Um, that's the rice specifically for risotto because it has more starch, so it will mm -hmm. make it, it will be more creamy, right? So. That's kind of the combination you are looking for when you, you are making risotto is that creaminess. Uh, when you do regularly, um, you do add cream to it, some type of cream and cheese and stuff like that. Uh, when you do plant-based, I, you know, sometimes I add uh, coconut cream or, um, or a vegan cheese, but, uh, it's super rare. I prefer not to add anything that is not natural <laughs> to my vegan meals, but there is that option, you know, some, I, I have made that by request, you know, with a little bit of cream and a little bit of vegan cheese and things like that. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, the farro was not soaked for this recipe because I purchased the Emmet farro, which Trader's Joe salad. So it's the pearl farro. So it's kind of pre-cooked per se. They give it a, a, a scare. Uh, so then it, it facilitates the time of cooking. When I make it for myself, I normally use the original farro from the, the health store, but then you have to soak overnight. You have to pre-cook a little bit. 
And then when it's half cooked, you drain the water and then you, you know, you do, you go to that process. But yeah, so it's the only place I know that sells that is Trader Joe, you know, the Emmet Faro. Um, but it can be in other places as well. Okay. Well, wow. so to, to eat really healthy, uh, to deal with your food, it takes time. I keep hearing about soaking this and soaking that. It's like I've been doing it wrong all along. You got to soak those beans in. And those yes. Beans. But you get the, the most out of it, I suppose. Yes. Um, you don't want to, you know, you want to stay away from canned because, you know, there is, of course, the sodium with everybody knows, but there's also the fact that they need to give shelf, that it needs a preservative, right? It's some type of a shelf life. So they put stuff there. Also, you don't know when they can the thing, you know, because canned food can be good for two, three years. It's good for our emergency. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I always have canned beans in case, just in case during the COVID, I have canned beans. You never know, right? You have to have your emergency. Emergency, so, right. Yeah, but- On a regular just, basis. Yeah, no, I just use the regular beans. And it's all, all you know, it's all about planning ahead, right? Mm -hmm. So if you plan ahead, it doesn't take much, right? So you soak overnight, and then in the morning, you can put on a slow cooker, or if you don't have time, you forgot, but you say, oh, I left that soaking, and I forgot to put on the slow cooker. You, If you have an Instapot or a pressure cooker, that will be done in no time. And when you were trying to, or you were shifting um, your diet, it's important for you to start um, purchasing those things that will make your life easier, right? Instapot is a, a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, discovery, you know, a wonderful introduction. You can do so many things with it, right? So all those things, and now we have the, the air fryer, you know, so all those things that it, it will make our lives easier. So we eat healthier, but we also have to work and have a life. We, know. we cannot be around the kitchen all the time. Right, right. So that's definitely confirmation. We had a program on the last time a couple of weeks ago about meal planning. And yes, it takes mm -hmm. planning ahead of time. And it seems like it's hard when you're just starting to do it, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. And it becomes easy because it becomes habit. You just do it and it saves a lot of time. So it's, it's definitely worth it. And it can save money as well, because then you make yes. your shopping list mm -hmm. and then you know exactly where you go to purchase them. You know, if there is a farmer's market once a week, you know exactly when you're going to purchase your fresh fruits and vegetables. And, you know, if there is a day I go to Whole Foods, there's a day there's sales and stuff. They already send it to your phone. Then you go there on that sales and then you purchase stuff for your week. You know, you're always kind of strategizing, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking head it's better than what i'm gonna do today <laughs> right, right and then you eat up, end up eating something not the best exactly <laughs> you waste so because you bought things and you don't use them all right yeah <laughs> so um so speaking of substitutes so i mean you already said it you can use farro just like rice and and whatnot so in your recipe for today you did use mushrooms now if someone is doesn't like mushrooms or just don't do mushrooms uh, for this particular recipe, is there a, a particular substitute for that or? You can use mixed vegetables, right? So the steps will be a little bit different. Um, if you use mixed vegetables, I believe you can use, what is those common, like California mix or, um, or even the traditional mix as in uh, carrots, green peas and what else is carrots green peas and i think corn i don't recommend the use of corn but you know um so then you you cook a little bit different because they don't need cooking at all right right, right? so you you start with the farro when the farro is basically cooked you add and then you mix and you do let it simmer right because mm -hmm. they, they don't need really <laughs> cooking you can make with that um, and uh, what else you can make? Because risotto, you kind of want to create that creaminess, right? Because it's the that's the the 
the tradition of risotto. And you can just use farro and then use coconut cream and vegan cheese, <laughs> you know, to give you that creaminess if you don't want to use mushrooms. But, you know, because if you use um, mixed vegetables, it's it won't look like a risotto. <laughs> But you can just use farro and produce that creaminess that will tell, oh, it's a risotto. You know? <laughs> I learned something to my risotto and I, I can recognize risotto. Yeah, or you can use, if you are into vegan uh, meat, you can use that vegan chicken, uh, right? Because that's another thing we use risotto. We, we the, the traditional risotto use shred chicken. So you can use uh, some chicken substitute as well. Okay, great. I just love the idea about the um, the farro. It just seems like it's a, a powerful it is. food, you know, with the, the fiber and the, the protein and all that. And sometimes we do rice too much. Okay. Say that again? Sometimes we just do too much rice. Yeah, so uh, this is what happens we tend to eat what the industry wants us to eat. <laughs> That's basically what it is. So rice is available mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they want us to eat right rice. So that's what's available. That's what is cheap. <laughs> and then you start, you know, I want brown rice, I want this and that. Then it starts getting a little bit more complicated to find good brown, <clears throat> excuse me, good, good brown rice. You have to go to the healthy store and it's a little bit more expensive, right? But then if we look at this big, amazing world that God created, that was not the only thing he created for us to eat. And then if you visit other cultures, right. you see that they combine different things, right? So farro is more like the Middle East. And you, you look at the Middle East, what they have, what the grains they use is bulgur, and you know, all those different things that we can use as rice as well mm -hmm. and that have a lot of a lot of nutrients there and protein that we always are crazy thinking about. We need more protein, we need more pro which we really don't. But, you know, um, so it's kind of thinking outside of the box and really taking ownership of what you're eating, not simply, you know, just not just eating what we always ate. Right. And without experimenting, that's something I tell my clients, be adventurous, you know, try different things. At least once a week, say so like, what I'm going to eat that I never ate and looks interesting. <laughs> and do your research, try, go to places and start looking into, and um, farmer's market is an amazing place to do that. You go there and start looking around and say like, what is this? <laughs> How do I make it? Because I do that sometimes, you know, they, I have, I go there and I see stuff. It's like, what, what in the world? And they start telling the, the, the farmers, they have pride to what they're growing. So they tell you everything, tell you the vitamins and all the nutrients and give you tips on how to cook stuff. The other day I purchased uh, garlic, garlic uh, scraps, right? The top of the garlic. And I was telling, how do you cook this thing? She said, oh, you don't, you don't eat it. <laughs> you just put it on the, on the stew or your, be or your beans and let it cook. And then you take it away because it's too um, tough, right? It's a lot of fiber. But then you take all those nutrients and the flavor of garlic is like five times more. <laughs> I'm a garlic person. <laughs> so I started using that, right? And um, it's always that it's a big, it's a big, big world. It's a lot to experiment and to use and not to be afraid of try new things. Very good. Very good. So you probably saw the question about would leeks work instead of mushroom? Yeah. So again, leeks are a delicate vegetable. So you kind of change the steps a little bit, right? So you cook the farro first, and then we'll add the leeks. I would say very, the very least part, because they they will cook in two minutes, they will be good. You don't even really need to cook them. Because um, if you cook them too much, they will turn brown and it's a, 
different tastes. Um, yeah, I, I can see it, uh, but again, I don't think it will look like the traditional risotto. It's gonna be far with licks, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but it's tasteful. And again, um, cooking is an art, right? So just put your juices out and start combining things and see how you like it, how your family likes it. Um, you don't have to use everything I use today. Uh, you can really substitute, you can take out the black pepper. Um, you, you know, if you don't like a lot of um, garlic, you don't have to use garlic, right? If you like different types of uh, herbs, I use rosemary and basil, you can use chives, you know, you can use oregano, which is a little bit more traditional for risotto. It really goes with oregano. So, right? So kind of the things you like, you can start trying. It's an art. What I'm here to do is to give you ideas and teach mm -hmm. you basic things. And then you start, okay, the lady used this, but I think I'm gonna use that, you know? So there you go. So, so some people have the talent to do that and you know they're really into different things, but some of us would have to rely on your YouTube channel. So we're looking forward Thank you. to seeing that. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, but it's a start. I have clients that they say like, I can never do it. And after two, three months, they are like bringing me recipes that they invented. I said like, there you go. You know, it's a muscle. You have to train it. <laughs> Especially if you like eating and you want to, you want to eat healthy and, you know, yep. tired of, of what's out there. And you're right, because, you know, they talk about the, um, the uh, American diet, the standard, you know, um, yep. and if we just stick to the things that are here available here, um, it's probably not going to be the best. So I love the idea of, especially going to an international um, market where you see different uh -huh. things and just uh -huh. try, as you said. And we yep. can always Google and see how to make this thing and get this different recipes. Yeah, there is um, there is two sites that I can recommend. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about a program that started three, four, four or five years ago called, um, started in, in England, called Veganuary. Have you heard about it? the January like vegan in January so they combined both words and became the January oh, okay. so they were calling people to become vegan for the month of January to detox from the holidays right mm -hmm. so they said just go for 30 days so that was kind of a challenge they start but then people got into it then January became February and March and then you know how it goes with the world of internet and everything so they have an amazing platform i believe it's veganware.com i think that's the website so they have an amazing platform they have um they teach you how to do the transition into veganism plant-based but what they they do that i love is that they open a space for people to submit the, the recipe they create. So you have people from all over the world mm -hmm. submitting their creation, like their vegan, whatever. Ooh. So you get, you become introduced with different ingredients and different combinations, right? You say like, what are you doing over there now? Well, oh, that, I never thought, of, what is that? So I started looking to see what is it. So it's amazing. It's really good. It's, all, it's like a community board per se. Um, and then the other one is called Bosch TV. I think it's boschtv.com, also out of England. Uh, there are two guys, they are hardcore and they cook. <laughs> They're cooking all the time. And when you make something that they, they teach, you know, they have on their website and you put your twist on it they, and mm -hmm. send it to them, they, they also put it on their website. So you can see how people pick up their recipes and start creating new things. They have a recipe that I use that I love is um, a zucchini lasagna, which is, <laughs> it's just, it's really good. So they have amazing flavorful recipes. Um, they have cookbooks and stuff like that. They're, nobody's paying me to do that. I'm just giving you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
ideas of things that normally I tell people, especially when you are starting this journey and or you don't like to cook, but you want to start kind of being creative. Those are the two places that I said there is over a thousand recipes and things there. Wow. Yeah. So the other one was Bosch TV, B O S. Yes. And Crystal put it, Bosch is on YouTube. So yeah, they have four or five cookbooks. They it's it's amazing. They they are very good. Mm -hmm. I will definitely check that out. So they, we they, are okay. So she's familiar with that. Yeah, they are. They are famous on the plant-based vegan community, uh, and they be explode like other people during COVID because they were cooking stuff all the time. Sometimes live, <laughs> so yeah, it's very wow. good. They're very entertaining as well. <laughs> Great, we'll check that out. Uh, COVID really blew up the internet, YouTube especially. Yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. is putting stuff up there, and that's just going to continue. That's just the way. The yep. way forward and the, with the food it's it's big it really is yes so we know yeah. where to go yeah yeah um awesome. i can't see everything has the um poll we did say that we're going to put up a poll um asking a couple of questions um so when you see that you can go ahead and respond there um do we have, or did I catch all of the questions? Um, bup, 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 bup. Yes, definitely looking forward to the, the vegetable broth. And yeah, I, I like the fact that uh, you did the recipe, but we can um, modify, we can make changes and and, and all that I actually have I was at um, I was at Aldi's okay. and I saw this was a couple of weeks ago I saw a package of faro oh cool and I picked it up thanks for letting me know oh. I didn't know they have at Aldi's so yes it was a, and you know Aldi's is not an American um, you know grocery store so yeah, yeah they they yeah so I'll have to let you know what I do with my faro. <laughs> Well, <laughs> are you into mushrooms or not into mushrooms? Say again. Are you into mushrooms? I have never prepared mushrooms. Okay. Um, I've had, I have, I've had um, mushrooms. I remember the first time I had mushrooms, it was a sandwich. And okay. um, I was like, this is meat. This is definitely yeah. meat. So it's, it's, it's the vegan meat I call, because I yeah. like, Last week we made, um, oh, I see the poll. So last week we made um, Borbello grilled that we use as patty, patties for our burgers, right? Uh -huh. So it's, you can do that. It's very versatile. <laughs> it's okay. very versatile. Um, and I will start with the white Borbello. They are mild. And then you go from there if you want to get introduced. My favorite is the shiitake and the lion's mane. But the lion's mane, you normally find them at farmer's market. I rarely see them. Sometimes Whole Foods have them. Okay. Those two are my favorite. Um, but they are very easy to prepare. <laughs> and they Thank can. Thank you, Veronica, by the way. She's showing us this vegan farro and quinoa meal from aldi i'm literally leaving aldi you know aldi closes at eight and wow. then, that's from all these at room oh. temperature or cook that okay. is nice i thought that's what you were talking about from aldi and i thought it's not before. quite that maybe i can run over this there is already to, let me show what i have here the one that i use it and now, cause yeah, so yeah, uh, all these is a good place for different things. So I use this one. Well, you show that, let me grab mine real quick. <laughs> this is from Trader's Joe. It says 10 minutes, but um, it, it doesn't take 10 minutes. It really takes 20. <laughs> it really takes 20, so, so this yeah. Is, hey. Yep, similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Similar. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You're good. So I want to see that open. Say it again. 
I want to see the package open. Yes, soon. Question. I did have another question. You, you mentioned about using that as um, instead of oatmeal, would you prepare it similar? Yeah. To how you do oatmeal? Yes. Or, so it would take a little as, longer. It's not as soft as oatmeal. So you kind of have to soak it a little bit, you know, in order to prepare. But yes, yeah, same uh, recipe, the cooking time, you, you cannot do um, overnight farro, like you do overnight oats. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what you could do, you could pre-cook the farro, like cook it for 10 minutes and mm -hmm. then add it to your mason jar and can do like an overnight farro per se, but you're gonna have to pre-cook, right? Because the oats, you just put it there then start adding whatever and start adding your uh, oatmeal or your coconut milk, right? And then let it soak overnight and the morning is ready. But you cannot do that with flour. You have to cook it. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna have to cook it unless you pre-cook. So if you're not if you're not trying to do the overnight, you would soak it overnight and then just cook it like normal. If you're not trying to do the overnight, I would say pre-cooked with water a little bit. I'm not sure how you make your oats. I like to make my oats. I like to cook it in milk, right? Okay. A lot of people cook in water, mm -hmm. right? And then add the things. I like to, I cook it in coconut milk, I think it tastes good. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, you kind of have to give it a kind of a pre-cook. If you are doing with milk, pre-cook with water a little bit. Okay. And then let the last cook, you cook with the milk and then you add your cinnamon or maple syrup, whatever you are trying to do, your fruits. Okay. Okay. So I will have to report to you what happened. I want to hear it. Package of Faro soon. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. <laughs> All righty. Let me see. Okay. So the poll has gone up. And I did, if you all saw it before, I did post um, Annalisa's information here, um, which includes her phone number and her website, which is just her name, annalisaantunes.com. And when we do, when her uh, YouTube channel comes up, we'll make sure to share that with yeah. you all so if you are um subscribed with us if you're getting the um the emails for our programs you'll get that information as well if you're not getting that you can go ahead and add your email address to the chat and we will um add you to our database so we can uh, keep in touch appreciate it Oh, it was okay. it was fun being here. I, I think I was not polite and I never say thank you. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> right? So that's what we do when we first come in. We say thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It was amazing. I am passionate about these things. I can tell. I cannot stop talking about. It. <laughs> so um, I think is an amazing program. You guys have uh, opportunity to, you know, open the doors for people to be um, engaged with this topic of health and wellness and uh, plant-based food or vegan food. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I, I appreciate the trust. <laughs> and um, I'm here to serve, you know, I'm here to All serve right. whatever I can. Excuse well, me. I wanted to say something. I wanted to give a shout out to Annalise. We've known each other for years and I've also been a client of hers. So you all go check her out. That's stuff. That's Crystal. <laughs> yes. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It has been a minute. So, I know. I know. So yeah, I've been her client in addition to her friend. So you all check her out. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. We had, fun. we had fun that time. Was during was before COVID? Was during COVID? Was during COVID? It was, right? yeah, it was during. It yeah, was it was, it was during. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Thank yeah, you. I I wanted to mention because I have attended a couple of your live online uh <laughs> cooking yes. 
would you call it a cooking class? Because I think you encourage people to cook along with you. Yeah, so it's the program is Food as Medicine, right? So that's the name of the program. And again, it's teaching and introducing people to nutritious foods and cooking the basics, right? Going to the basics. We Sometimes I do simple things that are a little complicated, but uh, most of the time it's um, simple ingredients because mm -hmm. we know our digestion digestive system prefers simple things, not too many stuff. Um, yeah, so we do once a month and uh, it's through the center that I work for. And I can send you the, the link. Well, you we have the link. It's uh, you register through Eventbrite. And if you don't register through Eventbrite normally, I have, I do live through Facebook. But then what happens when you just watch live from Facebook, you miss the, I send like a cooking list, a shopping list so you can purchase things and we can cook together, right? So that's the, the it's a cook along, <laughs> food as medicine. So if you just do on Facebook, you miss all that. And sometimes I send things after, I send the recipe after the program to the list. So it's important to register through Eventbrite, um, Eventbrite, and, uh, um, but I can send you guys the, the link and it's free. So we do one program per month. And also there's a, an additional program. There is a health chat. So we normally chat about a topic. Like this month we chat about garden, why garden, it's the benefits of gardening. This next month, we are talking, what we're talking about in July, of how to be the CEO of your health. So that's a good thing. So we have those chats. So one week, first, two, first Monday is, oh, thank you. First Monday is the health chat. Third Monday is the cook along uh, food as medicine program. So. It's okay. at six on Mondays and it's always live. Okay, excellent. Great. Yes, I I, sorry, I found that link. Um, so yeah, that's just another resource. That's just, I mean, there's as a vegan vegetarian, there are so many resources out there and we, we thank yeah. you all for sharing your skills and your passion. My pleasure. Those of us who are struggling. And trying, <laughs> trying to do better. It's a journey. It's never. It's not a destination. We continue to grow. You know, it's for myself as well. I, I was a meat eater, then a vegetarian, then a vegan. And I was a vegetarian for eighteen years till a friend told me, you know, you're not doing anything good for you. You know, you might as well eat meat. <laughs> I thought I was doing awesome. <laughs> And I was always debating. I said, like, I can never leave cheese, you know? And I, I'm like, no, it's like, how can I live without eggs and cheese? It's not gonna happen. It will never happen. <laughs> uh, until I did something that uh, normally I do for most things in my life, I try it. <laughs> I said, you know, cause everybody keeps talking. Let me try for a month and see what is it, right? And I'm telling you, it didn't, it, it didn't take a month. It's like in a week, everything was better. It, it was like my mind. It, it, it seems like before I was living on a fog. Mm. After a week, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> it looks like I'm intelligent. <laughs> you know, it's all those things, everything, everything. Like hair, skin, nails, uh, even my eye doctor said like, you know, your eyes are better. <laughs> I'm reducing your, and I said like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so everything, everything was better. So then I said like, yeah, let's go for it. We're not going, no, there's no coming back from here. That's and now, right. now there are so many uh, meat substitutes and cheeses and all those things, which I don't do anymore a lot. But when I'm doing transition with clients, that's how I introduce because you need that step, right? So you need that texture, some type of flavor. 
right? Until you reach it. Again, it's a journey, right? I'm not really fan of um, what we call just to cold turkey. <laughs> I like transition, right? So normally I transition people through um, substitute meats, the fake meats that they call. And then from there, then we go like, okay, let's just eat the amazing fruits and vegetables we have. We don't really need that unless it's 4th of July, we want a burger, you know, and things like that. But other than that, we don't really need it. <laughs> All right. So your main thing, I know you're still, you're, you're still in school, you're finishing up a program. And so I am, yes, so I am finishing a master's in nutrition, human clinical nutrition. So the goal is to be a certified clinician and my specialty will be um, chronic diseases. Okay. So all the five ones, uh, the major ones, that's what I'm specializing in. So diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, obesity, all those, those things. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, yeah, but I, you know, my undergrad, my other undergrad is uh, in nutrition. <laughs> so um, I'm going to wear, I'm just so super passionate about, and it's, you know, it's the program Food as Medicine. It shows that the relationship, the connection with food and health. Right. So the more we explore that, the more we, we, ha we can be in charge of our health and avoid all those environmental um, illnesses, right? Because right. right. there are some things we cannot avoid, right? We can't avoid COVID. Even Dr. Fauci mm -hmm. <laughs> the other day, so there's no hope for us. <laughs> but we can do the best we can but there are things that you know whatever we can do to avoid things right. we do too and then we trust God to take care of things that we can right you, you know. mentioned preventive that's you that's your thing that's my so, thing it's preventive and so treat you know also with um, the treat treat of diseases but I what I, you know, what I can do to let you know that if you do this, that, and that, you will avoid to have it, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, and all those things. But if you have it, we will try to reverse. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So Thank again, you. um, your, I'll just put this back up here again. Your information has been shared, um, including your um, direct information as well as the Food as Medicine program, which Thank I think you. is great. And that's just going to continue, right? Yes, that's, we don't have a, you know, they basically hired me to do that. So <laughs> that's a good paycheck over there. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Very good. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for being with and thank us. everybody for watching. <laughs> yes. Um, would you mind praying to close this out? Oh, I love to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for all the gifts you gave us. We are grateful that um, we have the opportunity to wake up today and to start our days with decisions and good decisions, decisions guided by you. We are grateful for this space that we can come and learn and talk and ask and improve, you know, incorporate things that will improve our health. And um, with that, you know, we all also taking care of our temple. Um, that you loan to us while we are in this earth. So we would like to take good care of it. Please send your Holy Spirit to continue to be with us tonight and the rest of the week. Protect us from um, dangers seen and unseen. And uh, please remind us to give all honor and glory to you and all that we do. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for Merlene. Thank you for all the, the people that are in this committee. Uh, we know that to have a program, to put a program in, and to sustain a program, it's not an easy task and it's a volunteer work. We are grateful for them. Continue to give them talents, continue to give them creativity and motivation to continue to do this beautiful work. Thank you so much for your love and care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Annalise. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, I'll say good night. We were just gonna see a few, um, a bit of information as I do this about our future presentations. Thank you so much again. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you.